Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In the previous video I released the Shinkansen Space Plane, which I will do some more work on. It could do with some visual touch-up and also functionality. I don't like how the tanks clip in. I think I can do that a different way. But, for now, I am going to make you jealous of the other two space planes that I didn't release. Uh, well, you guys picked the Shinkansen, so... Uh, now I get to show you what you could have done with the other two. Uh, but uh, here we have the Shuttle Mark II, and of course it was designed so that it could go to the moon without refueling. Shinkansen requires a refueling trip with a fairly large rocket, right? Either a Starship or a SLS to carry about 100 tons of methane and oxygen. Uh, Shell Mark II can be launched on a New Glenn uh, with enough fuel to get to the moon uh, in its tanks. Uh, but there is another way to use it. Uh, you do not have to launch it fully fueled, in which case it does not need to be launched on a New Glenn or larger rocket. Uh, it can be launched on a somewhat lighter rocket. And then it can rendezvous with a fuel depot in orbit of Earth. And as it so happens, at about the same time as I made the Shuttle Mark II, I was making a fuel depot just for it. Now, when I say I was making Fuel Depot, well, I was adapting a Fuel Depot idea already existing, and that was the original Asus Depot idea. And so, here we have my Asus Depot model, and let's see, a Sun Shield, we have a whole Sun Shield radiator thing. That's the hydrogen tank in there. It's all, uh, it's like for the Sun Shield, the rest of it is one part, so... Uh, the hydrogen tank and oxygen tank. So this was, you know, back in the day when Asus was actually a thing instead of being rolled into Centaur 5. Uh, this was how the Asus Depot would launch. It would be a very big uh, tankage assembly and carry a lot of propellant. I think it was uh, 111 tons or something like that. Uh, but of course we can't launch something that heavy on Vulcan as it is, so we need to have it underfueled. The question is, if we underfuel this and get it into orbit, how much does it have left over to refuel our little space plane? And how much can we underfuel the space plane? And in that case, how much does it need to carry and how big a rocket does it need to get into orbit? So we are going to try and do that whole deal. Uh, this is supposed to be a note, there we go. And I had to make a custom fairing, as you can tell. This whole sun shield thing was fun to do, too. Uh, but yeah, it has to be an extra, extra big fairing. Okay, so we're going to launch into a lunar-compatible orbit. And we are under-fueled on the hydrogen and oxygen tank in the depot, because otherwise it's not going to get to orbit, even though we have four RL-10s. And throttle up, SAS on. It's still got to be a push. We'll see how it goes. Um, I want to launch in daylight, so we're going to go ahead and launch now and correct as we go. And that'll just have to be how it is. Ignition. And launch. Now you can... Uh, unlock these. The hydrogen and oxygen tanks are to capture the boil off, but there's uh, oxygen and hydrogen production and cooling, and that's how it sort of does boil off reduction. Since we can't get perfect boil off elimination, that's how we do it. These aren't the normal boosters I use for this. Uh, I usually use the KW rocketry boosters. I think these are just stock plumes. They're obviously going steep. Okay, booster set. There is also a fuel cell. I'm just gonna go ahead and start that. Um, but we aren't down to 95%, so it's not gonna do anything. Fairing separation. Oh, at this particular height, the uh, Katniss Cape. Well, nothing looks particularly good. There's sort of a transition height for real solar system. Anyway, good to get rid of the fairings as soon as possible. So we're gonna end up in a high orbit, depending on whether the next stage has to go down a bit. 
Just temporarily pitching down here. Alright, separation and ignition. Uh, we're gonna pitch up again here. How much are we gonna have? That's the question. Also, will the Shell Mark II even fit? <laughs> That's another question. Hmm. Gonna be tight. Okay, well, that will be a high orbit. We could probably have carried more up. Just keep it like that, though. I mean, it uh, saves it on uh, station keeping fuel. So, what we have here is 54,000 liquid hydrogen, 18,000 liquid oxygen to use. Alright, so given that, let's see what we can do with the Shell Mark II and how much we can underfuel it. Okay, so there isn't actually that much fuel in the Shell Mark II. And if we take a look at this, uh, uh, 30,000 hydrogen and 9,000 oxygen here. And so altogether there's 61,000 hydrogen and 19,000 oxygen. And in the in the depot we have 54,000 hydrogen and 18,000 oxygen, so we can mostly underfuel this. Uh, we'll just uh, keep it like that. And unfortunately, these tanks are not in symmetry, uh, so that leaves us about 31 tons. But we do have some fuel in here that could be used for a rendezvous. Uh, all in all, though, this seems like it could be launchable by the Vulcan rocket again. It's uh, a little bit beyond a single stick Falcon 9. Um, yeah, uh, Falcon Heavy, uh, it's too much lag, there's 27 engines. <laughs> so I think I'm going to go with the Vulcan option here as the minimum kind of deal and see how that works. Okay, so here we go. I've underfueled the uh, Centaur stage. And we will need uh, launch clamps to keep things topped off because we are going to time warp a little bit in order to line up with the Aces Depot. We're launching immediately after, uh, but since the Aces Depot did an inclination correction in order to line up with the moon because it launched early, that gives us time to launch at basically the right time, though it will be in the dark. I've always had trouble with the Centaur stage trying to coax it into getting a heavy or uh, heavy payload into orbit and we will have more drag than usual in this case we'll see how it goes okay throttle up SAS on ignition and launch we do want to get as much horizontal speed as possible I mean on if we're gonna underfuel the centaur stage our goal is to not actually toss it really high up first. Our delta V is very constrained. Okay, booster set. Delta V wise this isn't great. Let's see. Okay, abort system separation. I don't know if it's worth underfueling the Shell Mark II in order to make this work out. It doesn't need that much larger launcher in order to launch it fully fueled. And this is always the problem with fuel depots. I, Because you have to launch the depot, you have to launch the fuel for the depot, unless you are actually mining asteroids to get the water for the hydrogen and oxygen. Only if you are constrained on what rockets you are able to use, I suppose. But even now, it, uh, I don't know, right now it doesn't look like we're going to make orbit very easily. Pitch up more to give ourselves some time. We're going to have to use some of the hydrogen and oxygen in here to really make things work. Now, the Vulcan Centaur ought to be able to launch this into orbit. It's within its capacity. But... Trajectory-wise, it's very hard. <laughs> Trajectory-wise, it's not an easy thing to do. Okay, getting ready for the end of the Centaur stage. And separation and ignition of the BE-7s, which don't have a whole lot to work with here, because we underfueled. 
And will we end up with enough to get to the moon like this? Now I don't know. Seemed like a good idea. But that's why we have to do an experiment, as it is. We could have just, like, topped off the fuel in here and used it as its own upper stage, but then... I mean, it doesn't have as much thrust with these four combined as the Centaur stage either. So I don't know if that would have been beneficial or not. And they're not as efficient as the, uh, as the RL-10s, so... We also have the OMS fuel, but we were sort of wanting to use that to capture around the moon and return. So this whole business gets us into a bind. Okay, well, let's try to do the rendezvous, even though this is looking like less and less of a good deal here. Well, there's our target. Okay, we are in render range. Okay, can we fit is now the question. Coming in. Uh, come on, you can do it. There we go. All right, all RCS off. So how much Delta V will we get? Because we use some of the, well, Okay, all of the fuel that we carried up, well, almost all. Oh, we have to do it in a balanced way. Stop, stop. Oh, it's actually pretty hard to transfer it in a perfectly balanced way. I don't know if the fuel mixture on the Asus is the same as the fuel mixture with the BE-7s. Leaving the Asus Depot with no fuel is not great, but we'll do it this time. Well, that's roughly equal, I think. Lots of heat penetration here. No MLI. I definitely put MLI layers. Gosh darn it. Anyway, well, at least we'll be making our transfer soon. Undock. Just shut down the OMS engines. 2,888. So, not quite as much as we'd like for a transfer to the moon. And then after we get to the moon, we have about 1,100 left. We can capture around the moon, but really we would need a refueling around the moon. Let's go ahead and do it, just to demonstrate that we can. But then we, I mean, we would have enough to capture around the moon, rendezvous with something, and then we would need to be refueled. If we could get some hydrogen and oxygen from it, that would be fine. Now, the BE-7s I've got here, uh, I set to have 10 ignitions. No guarantee how many ignitions they would actually have, but I set it to 10. So they would need to be replaced or given some more ignitions somehow after a little while. Well, we've sort of got a polarish approach, and I don't really mind that because actually stations might be placed like that. So we'll just go with that. And if we were going into a halo orbit like the Lunar Gateway would be in, it'd be easy. There wouldn't be much Delta V requirement. But I'll just go ahead and assume a slightly lower orbit for our station. And we will proceed like that. So let's just demonstrate this. But obviously, considering we're basically short about 200 meters per second, we... A little bit of optimization on just about everything uh, would probably have helped. It's uh, more than 10 minute burn time. We should not burn to depletion because if we do, we will not have any fuel cell fuel left. Uh, um, and we're depleting our oxygen for the OMS. Oops. Okay, hold on a sec. But obviously, going to the moon, this wouldn't be able to do too much. Its bay is filled with fuel. All it can do is transfer peoples. Okay, so at this point, we could ditch the tanks, but I think it'd be better to be able to refuel around the moon. That's a long-term goal, though. Uh, for now, we will continue with our OMS system. 
Should have shut these down, otherwise they will use our fuel cell fuel again. If you're wondering why not just use the BE-7s as our OMS engines, my expectation was that they would not be able to ignite that often. We could get closer, but I think we'll just go with this. So here we are around the moon at long last. I really do need to create a proper ISRU system for the moon so that we can bring up propellant for this sort of thing. But for now, I have drilling rigs, though they sometimes like to explode. <laughs> uh, we have drilling rigs, but we need a system to lift that propellant off of the moon, which we do not have right now. All right, I think we'll leave it there for now. Uh, it's uh, it's a weird orbit, but yep, the Asus Depot and the Shell Mark II, a uh, a combination in need of some refinement, as it turns out. But experiment complete. With that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.